What is voiceover? And is a voiceover career right for you? I'm Dane Reed, the voiceover guy. And today for career day at Sequoia Middle School 2020, I'm going to answer your question. Check me out. So what is voiceover? So imagine you're riding in the car with your dad or your mom and you hear this. The new Dart is a rude awakening for sleepy cars. Get a shot of adrenaline with up to 184 horsepower. It's the most technologically advanced car in its class. And it gets up to 41 highway MPGs. Plus, get this special offer when you click here. Yeah, that's me. And that's voiceover. Voiceover or voice acting is acting just like what you see on TV, except it leaves out the parts where your body is seen. Only your voice represents everything from your emotions to your inflections to uh, your voice can even show what you're doing with your body without actually showing. What we do as professionals is we convey a message to the public that they subconsciously hear without always paying attention to who we are. So I've been doing voiceover for uh, 15 years, since 2004, and I've done a lot of different projects. Um, I work as the official voice for radio stations, which, call, which is called a radio imaging person. Whether you're in Pittsburgh or Cleveland, thanks for locking us in at 947-star.com. I do narrations for businesses. The copyrighted anti-money laundering course that you are about to begin is designed to fulfill your regulatory requirements. I do a lot of production for club commercials. Saturday, June 6th at the Columbus Common. Live on stage, it's our R&B legend, Donnell Jones. And my voice has been on things like documentary, for instance. A man of principle, Ambassador Young approached diplomacy as politics of respect, lessons learned from the fight for civil rights in the U.S. Other voiceover people in my business also do uh, voiceovers for video games, which a lot of you may actually play. When I first started doing voiceover, I produced a demo and my first year i got paid like 75 dollars um <laughs> for two voiceovers that i did that was 75 dollars in total uh, now i've reached a point where um 75 dollars generally couldn't get me to turn on my microphone so i work every day with um, a microphone this microphone right here is called a sennheiser 416 and I work with a number of other microphones. The idea is that I use this as a tool to project my voice and to get uh, the kind of sound that I want. And my sound varies from project to project and it's not always in my normal speaking voice. So you don't always hear this voice that I'm using. So a lot of what I do every day is marketing. Uh, what I learned many years ago is that you can have a great product, but if it's not marketed right, it's just a great product sitting on a shelf. And so I spend a lot of my time marketing to get new clients and also to retain the kind of clients that I already have. I also have various agents. Um, talent agents help you to find work they audition you um, and if you are the person that the client wants on their job then you book the job and um, a lot of the stuff pays really well some of the cool things that I've done in my career is I traveled for several months with the Harlem Globetrotters as their live announcer Another cool thing that I did is for one season, I was the voice, the stadium announcer for the Georgia State Panther football team. So as a voiceover talent, you do a lot of things involving your voice. You know, not every voiceover talent can expect to get rich. It's like any other field. If uh, you get involved in it, there are gonna be some people who are super rich and then there are gonna be some people who are struggling a lot of it has to do with your ability to market yourself. 
but learning how to market is one of the key ingredients in getting results in being a voiceover talent. This field takes a lot of things. It takes time, it takes investment. You're gonna have to buy uh, equipment. Some of this equipment can be kind of expensive even though the price of equipment is getting lower. And also you're gonna have to spend money on training classes and demo. Those things are really important because at the end of the day, you need to know how to act and you also need to be able to show people that you know how to act and your demo is your key marketing material to show people that you have talent. So I think one of the things that I love about being a voiceover person is the flexibility. I work from home. This is the most dressed up that I ever am. Uh, a lot of times I'm working in my pajamas. Um, I also get a chance to work on my laptop and take my laptop to various places. I love to travel and I've been to 30 countries at this point and I have physically taken my laptop and my microphone and worked in every single one of those countries that I've been to. And so uh, for that, I love this job because it allows me to be a digital nomad. It allows me to be expressive. It allows me to be creative. And uh, I love that about voiceover work. And so for me and the kind of personality that I am, it's a perfect fit. And you have to figure out whether or not voiceover would be right for you. Are you willing to invest? Are you willing to train? Uh, are you willing to constantly learn? Are you willing to market yourself? Are you willing to accept rejection when you audition for jobs and you don't get them? Those are some of the things that you have to keep in mind in determining whether or not voiceover is right for you. I hope that I've answered a lot of you guys' questions. If I haven't, please definitely uh, log on to my website or log on to my YouTube channel and shoot me a question. I'm Dane Reed, the voiceover guy, and I'm gone. Peace, Sequoia Middle School. <laughs>